Alhamdulillah I have been given this topic to talk about managing cultural uh, differences. Um, and, and honestly, I appreciate the topic just because I feel like, um, like my existence has been about managing cultural differences ever since I accepted Islam. So I felt like I got a PhD on this one, seriously, no joke. And um, I'm sure many of us who converted to Islam um, can, got at least a master's in managing cultural difference, at least, at least. Um, I say PhD because I had to learn, I, I learned Urdu as well, so that, that, that was my postdoctorate right there. Then I married a Daisy, so that was my double postgrad right there. So I'm, I'm kind of overqualified for tonight, wallahu alam. Not based on ilm, but just based on, you know, experiential, seriously. Um, but you know, all jokes aside, I want to actually, I want to start this evening with an incident that um, I've shared a few times with some of my students, um, and it actually fits ex perfectly into this, uh, this evening. Um, I, I, I studied in a city that I grew up in, in Buffalo, New York, which was a, uh, you know, one of those tough inner cities, uh, like any other urban area in America. You've seen one, you've seen them all, um, same deal. Uh, so it just so happened, much it was right in the middle of the hood, and uh, it was Fajr time, Ramadan, me and a convert brother. Uh, and this brother has, has just accepted Islam, maybe like four months. So as I said, you know, he was just learning the lingo. You know what I'm saying? The Muslim lingo, right? He was just getting his mashallahs, his inshallahs, his, you know, he was about there. He was about there, right? And we're sitting in the masjid, it's Fajr time, and... Um, it just coincidentally, a brother who was walking to the masjid, that fajr, um, he, got, he got mugged on the way to the masjid. And he was okay. There was an auntie in the window who was watching. Uh, she said she was only happened to be watching that moment. <laughs> but she normally sits in the window and watches all the time. So, but anyways, uh, so she started yelling and they ran away and the police were like, you probably saved his life. So she felt justified in watching from the window for the rest of her life. Alhamdulillah. So... Um, so, brother was okay, alhamdulillah, but another brother, another brother comes into the masjid and he's very frantic and he wants to communicate to us. Um, and, and, and what we have to realize when it comes to managing cultural differences, the job of us and the job of the, uh, the ones who's grown up in this country woke or the ones who've grown up second generation or the convert, uh, for many of us the job is to become these cultural um, these, these cultural, uh, these people who are able to join two extremes and make people understand one another who otherwise could not understand uh, one another. And I'm going to clarify that through this example. So this brother walks into the masjid extremely frantic um, about what he just had witnessed outside. Older, Daisy, you know, grew up in Pakistan, maybe was here, I don't know how long he's been here. Obviously knows English very well. Uh, he had been here for a while. And he runs into the masjid. The first people he sees is me and the new brother. And we're sitting on the floor and we're just talking. So he goes, Mikayo, Mikayo, guess what just happened? I'm like, what, what? Uncle G, what, what, what happened? He's like, brother Abdullah just got, just got jumped outside. And the new brother goes, mashallah. <laughs> right? Mashallah. Now, if you didn't laugh, it's for a few reasons. Because you're the ones we need to work on. Right, right. Yeah, you don't understand. So, so, so right, right there, I'm like, uh-oh, here we go. Now, the, the, the thing we have to realize is culture is a beautiful thing. When you accept Islam, you don't have to leave culture at the door. Hakim bin Hazm, he, he, he accepted Islam and he was like, Ya Rasulullah, I used to take oath to do sadaqah, I used to do this, I used to do that, I used to do... Mm -hmm. Where did all that go? The Prophet ﷺ said, Aslamta al ma aslafta. The good in you is what brought you to the deen. 
You can have good. You don't have to check that at the door when you walk in and take your shahada, leave everything you are behind you. And the problem is, as a community, as, the, as Brother Naeem explained, many of us, and this is the st thing we struggle with in America, is this year we have all been fighting for legislation to keep the doors of this country open to people to come. But you have to understand what the implications of that are on the community itself. The implications is that we have to have the bandwidth in order to bring those people in so they understand what it means to be an American Muslim. Because as he said, many of them will get off the boat and their identity is equated to Islam. When they get off the boat the way they see Islam, that's their identity. And the problem with pluralism, it's a beautiful problem in reality, the problem with pluralism is that it creates friction. Yeah, I, I had a, when I was in uh, grammar school, we had tech, and our tech class was carpentry. So we used to have to take the um, sandpaper, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. I don't know what y'all did. Now they program it. Right. So I mean, <laughs> like sandpaper, like it was C++ or something right. like, right? <laughs> so in tech class, we used to have to, you know, make different things, and the tech teacher, he'll carve it out for you, but you got to go back, and you got to sand it with the sandpaper. You bring it back to him, and he'll be like, nah, it's still rough. You're like, yo, it's smooth. Nah, it's still rough. Go back, and you sand it some more. But that friction is what takes away imperfections. Think about what I'm saying. That friction is what takes away the imperfections that lie in that piece of wood. The difficulty, I will never, no, 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 no longer call it a problem, the difficulty that lies in pluralism is that you question your own identity when you see someone other than yourself. And it makes you question, wait, why am I dressed like this? Why do I look like this? Culture is a beautiful thing. We need to hold on. I like my acapella rap. I like my collard greens. I like my foods. They make me who I am. I like my jokes. And the interesting thing about communication, as a brother Naeem was speaking about, is like I speak Urdu fluently. But till today, I don't understand a joke in Urdu. I can't get the punchline. But that's heavy. You know why? Because when you're communicating with people, if you can't make them laugh, you don't need to be communicating there. If you can't speak on a person's level where you can make them laugh, how will you be able to articulate this prophetic message to somebody? Think about what I'm saying there. And that's why the Rasul Sallallahu the verse was revealed, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولِ إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِهِ No prophet was sent except they spoke the language of the people. It's not just speaking the language, because you may know my language. I know your language. I don't get a joke of it. It doesn't hit with me. I can't get it. I know every word, but the punchline doesn't come across to me. What I'm trying to say here is that our job now, as we fight for legislation to keep these doors open, and at the same time fight to bring people into Islam through conversion, we have two extremes here. Extreme that has seen no other Islam than the Islam from their country, whatever country it was. And then those who are coming to Islam thinking they have to leave all of their culture at the door when they walk in. It's a big task managing the cultural diversity and differences which is amongst us. Culture is a beautiful thing. Hold on to who you are. Maintain who you are. Maintain that identity. That is who you are. That is the beautiful thing that brought you to the deen. And if you want to walk away, the reason I love these conferences is your patience, you walk away with gems. Like you may sit in hours and, and get one gem that hits you for the rest of your life. I'm going to drop it on you. Don't worry. <laughs> Just wait. If you ain't heard her yet, pff, come on. No, all jokes aside, the hadith I want to... An-nasu kel ma'adin. The Rasul Sallallahu said, Humanity, people are like, are like minds. Kama'adin al-dhahab wal fidda Just like gold or silver mines. The hadith... And then he said, Rasul Sallallahu said, Khiyarukum fil jahiliyya. Those who have beautiful qualities in Jahiliyyah will have this even amplified beautiful qualities in Islam. When they learn the deen though. Ah. So there we have to qualify this culture being a good thing. That's the qualification. That's how we qualify that statement that culture is a beautiful thing. When they learn the deen. But this hadith 
actually communicates a responsibility. Somebody's got to go down in the mine and pull out that, those gems and shine them up and let people see the beauty that naturally exists inside of them. Think about what the hadith is saying. Somebody has to go down there and, and bring those, those out and work on them to bring them out. But what does this have to do? The, the point is, what happened in the first story I told you when the brother was like, mashallah, right? You, do you know what happened? Somebody tell me what happened. Someone that wasn't in my last workshop. <laughs> what happened? Naeem, what happened? What do you think happened, Naeem? You th correct is an understatement. <laughs> correct is like, mashallah, stuck for Allah. La hawla wa la He got the whole dictionary of Islamic vocabulary. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. How dare you say mashallah? And I'm sitting there just like, why is my head held down? Because you don't understand him and he don't understand you. And we fight in legislation. Bring everybody on and come on, come on. And we're not even ready for it yet. We're not even ready for it yet. Think about what's being said. So there are, made, there are things we have to do when it comes to managing these cultural differences. The Rasul Sallallahu gave us a beautiful example in the, in the city state of Medina that was, ex, that was set up. Those who, this is praising the Ansar. So in order to understand our responsibility, you have to look back at our history where we have the Ansar and the Muhajireen. This is Sunday School 101. Sunday School 101, the Ansar and Muhajireen. Ansar open the doors, they say come on in. Muhajireen don't have anything, but they're also bringing the baggage of their culture with them. And not only that, the culture and the baggage of the Ansar is affecting the Muhajireen. It's in the Hadith. They were, they were affecting one another. But that friction makes us all better. That's the point. How so? The Muhajireen came and complained to the Prophet Sallallahu that our sisters are wilding out. They didn't say sisters, our wives are wilding out. Well, I'm sorry to be colloquial. I just see a lot of young faces. So... Um, <laughs> Our sisters are um, well, no. speaking, back. speaking back. Thank you, Naim. Speaking back to us. The, these are the Muhajireen. And they're like, this never happened. Like, we don't roll like this in Mecca. This wasn't us. And, 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 and the Prophet said, so when, how did this start happening? The sisters from Medina started schooling them. <laughs> So the sisters from Medina started, what, y'all don't talk back? We talk back? <laughs> like, oh, word? How, what, what do you say? How? You can imagine the sessions, too. You can imagine, you can imagine what was going on. And, 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 but but look, at, look at the, all, my only point from that is no thick rule and no nothing, but to show there were cultural differences that existed in that society, and they managed that. They handled that. So I was asked specifically to um, come up with uh, a few pointers, tips to walk away with. Number one tip is going to be this. Don't let the love of your heritage and yourself blind you from the value and beauty of others. See, as Americans, we have this tendency to think that I'm culturally agnostic and everybody else is cultural. I'm going to say that one more time. As Americans, we start to think that I'm a cultural agnostic and they're very cultural people. Look how they dress. Wow, that's super cultural there. And I don't have culture. I'm just rational. Everything I do is rationally based and like, you know, it just makes sense, right? SubhanAllah. So you don't have culture? You're not a product of the society you grew up in either? But you don't see that in yourself the same way they don't see that in others. It's the same way they don't see that in themselves. So don't let your love of yourself blind you from the beauty in others. There is beauty in every one of our cultures that we need to take from. And there's other stuff we need to drop too, like ap ke lok, ap lok, ap lok. Y'all didn't catch that. I caught it, and brother Naeem, I think he was out of line. Because ap lok, so, so the story he told was about the vendor that said, you people. You people. And the word ap is used for respect in certain situations. But not in that context. Aplok just means you people. 
And that's cultural racist baggage that's come over that needs to be checked at Ellis Island. But unfortunately, it don't get checked there. It needs to get checked. So I feel personally in that situation, we needed to kind of educate, educate that brother a little bit. And the Prophet Sallallahu educated the community when the Sahaba started to uh, become Asabiyah, when the Sahaba started to stand up and say, oh, we're in Sar, or we're Khazraj, and, and a fight almost broke out, the Prophet Sallallahu was like, this, is, this stinks, this is Jahiliyyah. This is, ja this is ignorance. I'm out. I'm not a part of this Jahiliyyah. So number one is going to be what? Don't let the love of yourself and your culture blind you from the beauties that exist in other cultures that you can benefit, your, benefit the community and benefit ourselves from that. Salman al-Farsi had the idea to b dig the trench. That was purely from his culture. And it helped the believers at that time. He didn't check all of his Persian, who he was, everything. He let that come. Before I go forward, I don't want to forget this point, which is extremely important. And I don't know if everyone took this point home. Those who come only seeing one Islam, they feel their identity threatened when they see Islam practice in a different way. My complete identity is being challenged right now. And that's difficult for people to handle. That you telling me the whole way I've been doing it is not, well, the only way to do it? That's difficult for people to handle. So understand that we have to be gentle with this as well. We have to be gentle. Going forward, number two. Um, as Brother Naeem spoke on so beautifully, learn to listen to people. Learn to listen. And, and, and I'm not going to reiterate what he said. All I'm going to say is listening requires presence. Listening requires presence. And one of the major problems we have is establishing presence in the moment that we're in right now. And not going off somewhere else. Five minutes from now, five minutes ago, or somewhere else. Or on my phone, go somewhere else as well. Be present with the people who you're dealing with. And that is the best gift you could give someone. Just think of it this way. The best gift you can give Allah is presence of mind in prayer. And the best gift you can give to a person is absolute presence when they speak to you. What could be better than that? So listening, learning to listen, learning to understand. Listen from their perspective, not from our perspective. Um, number two, don't try to make a monolith. Don't try to make a, a single, don't try to make us all look the same. Uniformity is not unity. I'll give you a good example. One brother, we were talking about breaking the fast. We gave him a day that I don't like dates. Everybody's like, stop for Allah. <laughs> He's like, I don't like dates. Stop. Everyone's like, that's blasphemous right there. The prophet, I'll give you an example from the Sita. The Prophet said to them, some Sahaba were eating bub, eating lizard. They offered it to him. He's like, no, nah, I'm good. They're like, haram ya Rasulullah. He's like, no, nah, my people don't eat it. Wallahi, the words of the hadith was, my people don't eat that. You don't like dates? That's okay. You don't got to drink ruwabza. <laughs> No, seriously, understand that we don't have to create a monolith. We don't have to create a monolith. You can maintain who you are and let that flexibility be there and then find the beauty in other people's ways. Taste that. Come taste some collard greens. You'll see the beauty. <laughs> number, uh, number four, to the parents. Number four to the parents is... Um, the, uh, the advice of Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, which is, Rabbu awladakum li zamanihim la li zamanikum. Fa innahum khuliku li zamanin ghayri zamanikum. That your children, your children, believe it or not, are, are of a different culture than you. Swallow that bitter pill. Imam Ali radiallahu an, he says, educate or raise your children 
for a context other than your context. Raise your children for a context other than your context. What that means is maintain the ideals, but give it to them in a way where it puts it in their context for them. But what you have to understand first and foremost is if that you don't understand the culture within which, in, with, within which you live, that culture is going to come walking in your front door. So you better understand it. Because that is your children's culture. So for parents, the, the thing to understand here, for parents, the thing to understand here is to um, raise your children in the context for which they grow up in. Understand their culture. What that means is you have to already understand their culture is different from yours. And for many parents, that's a bitter pill to swallow. Well, it doesn't get swallowed most of the time. It's, it's regurgitated. It's spit up. No. You are us. Why'd you bring me here then? What did we come here for? What was the point? Next one. Number five. Managing, what are we speaking about? Managing cultural differences. Friction is what made my piece of wood in tech smooth. Friction is healthy. It's healthy. Number five is be careful of making third spaces the goal. Be careful of making yourself these nice lubricated third spaces where there's no friction. Yes, they may be helpful sometimes. But will you be able to go back into the community and be with everybody else where the friction is? Or will every time you have a difficulty, you go and make a circle, like in pre-K? This is for our group over here. Use the third space is cool. Don't make them the goal. Because then we just have 20 different third spaces. Where's the community? Think about that. If every, every, all of us who have a little, someone rough our shoulders wrong in the mush and make a third space, how many? There's no third space. It's just as many opinions as spaces now. Live with the people. Learn how to deal with these differences. That will make us better. It's not easy, but that's what's make us better. And unfortunately, we have this culture now where it's the, if the masjid rubs me wrong, I'm just going to go make a third space. Come on. Who wants to come? Where are your children going to grow up then? Your children going to grow up in the third space? <laughs> SubhanAllah. Allah give us tawfiq. Allah give us tawfiq. Number six. For the first generation, which is immigrant community, know your role in this country and know your allies. Know your role in this country and know your allies. What I mean by that is, many have come and chose to ignore the systemic oppression, violence, and destabilization of the weak of this country. You came over for material reasons, and you said, I didn't come here to change the world. Nor do I want to, you know, cause any problems for me and my family. I'm going to move to suburbia and uh, live the American white dream. But you ain't American, you ain't white. <laughs> and what that means is know your allies, know your role, and join, join ranks. Rank up. Join ranks. It's very important. The social capital that you need to give to this country wasn't realized until September 11th happened. And you felt that your dream was fading away in suburbia. We never had that dream. So we're like, come on, if you want to come. <laughs> we got you. Should have been here earlier, though. <laughs> A little late. <laughs> no, all jokes aside. And what I, what I mean by this is... Um, unfortunately, some of our community members of the immigrant community have come over and been benefiting and not helping to, to, to um, bring stability back. 
into some people's lives. They haven't been working to do that. And, um, and, and that's prob problematic. Number seven. Um, for the youth, and this is part of that uh, American whitewashing that happens, uh, that loss of who you are, is don't assume, as I said earlier, that your parents are a product of culture, but you, are, you yourself are a cultural agnostic. Oh, I'm just a rational human being. I, I'm not a result of any culture. No, understand that you too have a culture as well. And, and here's the key. Once you understand that you too have a culture as well, you realize that I can benefit from the culture of, my, of who I am, my people, my family, where I came from. I can benefit from that. I, they have something of value to bring to this world. I don't have to get rid of that. There's value in that that this country can benefit from. So these are just some, some tips I wanted to um, share with everybody. And I want us to realize that um, the, the cultural differences that exist, they're beautiful. They're beautiful. Our, our communities are beautiful. But we, we, we need to stop trying to remove those differences, recognize our cultures, and we need to allow for people to embrace who they are. We need to stop telling converts to check your culture at the door and let my culture into the masjid. Well, you got in the sheets, but I can't listen to my stuff? Like, didn't you remember when that happened? You're like, wait, hold on. If y'all are listening to that, I'm going to listen to this. No, so all jokes aside, seriously, um, I, I feel that um, this is a very important issue. It's not going anywhere, but with the next generation that's growing up as Americans with all of their diversity, don't lose the diversity. Hold on to who you are because there's benefit that that brings to the country. But at the same time, um, understand other people as well and allow them to grow in their culture and their Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. May Allah make us of those people who he said, those who prepared a home for others and they prepared faith and iman for others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all, make this conference beneficial for you uh, and all of the speakers. May Allah bless your time and give our imam uh, health, inshallah ta'ana. Inshallah ta'ana. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.